Hi, everybody. I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading. As you all know, a full service, physical gold and silver dealer. Welcome to Wednesday's Q&A. Uh, Eric is off today, so you got me, and I'm just going to jump right in. And we're going to start with a question from Rick R. And he says, I believe that we are heading into an extreme hyperinflationary event and banking crisis. I would agree. I understand the need to protect myself and my family. If utter chaos happens, a Mad Max situation, what good would holding gold and silver be? How will it help when no one has anything to buy it when I want to use it? Okay, so a Mad Max, utter chaos, a Mad Max situation is going to happen when people panic. But goods don't just evaporate. So the point, but, but things do get a whole lot cheaper and they get very, very local for a minute. So silver for me is about barterability, right? And the thing about silver is it has no shelf life and it's universally accepted. So even in a Mad Max situation, when you stop and think about wars and how people used to, you know, sew their gold and silver, their holdings into their clothing, and they would use them to barter with. In any circumstance, people go back to, it's in our DNA. So silver for barterability, but you can use anything else that is physical or any talents that you have also for barterability. It's just that if I have strawberries and I want somebody who some blueberries, then and this person that has the blueberries is allergic or doesn't want strawberries. I mean, those things all have a shelf life. Silver does not. So history has shown us, and I and I'm presuming just a repetition of history here because we've got lots of examples of it. And you can even think about um, Venezuela or Turkey, etc. This is what they use. Physical metals is what they use. Now, how will it help when no one has anything to buy with it? Again, things don't just evaporate into the ethosphere. You know, you guys know I'm an urban farmer. I have eggs. I have food. Food becomes the single biggest issue. But things just don't disappear and go into the ethosphere. However, you are going to see real estate get a whole lot less expensive. We've already been watching all of those Rolexes and those other very expensive toys that people bought uh, during the big heyday and now they have to liquidate. So what happens during even a Mad Max situation is that there's always opportunity in crisis. And that's what your gold is about. Your gold is about having the ability to hold your purchasing power and take advantage of those opportunities to have your wealth, their wealth transfer your way. That's why you see central banks accumulating gold. So it's not like wealth just disappears. It doesn't. It just shifts location. And as long as you can hold your purchasing power, you have the opportunity to have that wealth shift your way. And as far as food and other necessities go, gasoline, etc., for your car, that's this is what's going to help you with that. And David Dubine asks, if your mortgage is written to pay back in US dollars and the same system switches to CBDC US dollars, is that the same or did the bank default? Well, it, it is, they're positioning it as the same, the digital dollar. But what I think we're going to see happen, since they really want people to accept and utilize the CBDC, is that in a crisis, your currency, the dollars are most likely, I think, we'll see, I'm either going to be right or wrong, but they're going to hyperinflate where they're going to manage the purchasing power value of the CBDC. But you will have the ability to pay that back in terms of dollars inside of this window. When they do, 
that overnight revaluation because then we're going to see the current spot price, which now is manipulated since a rising gold price is an indication of a failing currency. We are most likely to see, again, a repetition of history. They do the revaluation of the fiat money that has no intrinsic value, only used in one place, against something that is all all intrinsic value gold, which is used in every single sector of the global economy. That's really, you're going to liquidate just the amount of gold that you then need to boom, pay that mortgage off in US dollars. So we're most likely to have a window, but when they switch us to CBDCs, they're going to call it the digital dollar. They're going to want you to think that it's the same thing. So either way, this will be your opportunity to repay that mortgage with currencies that have virtually zero value. And, and right now, if you, if you buy gold with it being so severely undervalued, again, you're going to need even less what might take you 10 ounces of gold right now to pay off the mortgage during the, the reset could only maybe a quarter of an ounce or a half an ounce, something like that. And John McMullen asks, if printing too much money caused this inflation, why wouldn't destroying half the money supply fix it? Also, when they come out with this new CBDC, will we still be able to buy gold with it, right? All right, so let's do one at a time. Well, how would destroying half of the money supply, how would they do that? It'd be by retiring the debt. And they've pricked that debt bubble. But the reason why it wouldn't fix the problem or fix the inflation is about the loss of purchasing power. And historically, they've never regained purchasing power. Once we're down and we are officially, we're at three cents, but we're basically at zero. We just, it's just that the population is still willing to work for those dollars. But once that confidence is lost, no, it, we're, we're too far gone to change it. It would have required a while ago because the debt, it's not that it's not sustainable, it is not payable. So the debt that's going to be destroyed in this debt bubble pop will not bring the purchasing power back to the currency. That is long gone. 97% and counting. And if you go into the FRED, F-R-E-D, and you put in purchasing power of the consumer dollar, and you look at it even on a short-term basis, you're going to see that one thing that is constant is the decline in purchasing power. It just keeps getting less and less and less. So when they come out with this new CBDC, will we still be able to buy gold with it, right? I don't know. What are you waiting for? get your gold while you still can. Because what we've seen is that the central banks are hoovering up the gold that's out there. And who knows more about what they're doing to the money system and even into the CBDC, the new CBD system. But I do think that they're going to allow the dollars to hyperinflate and then artificially maintain the CBDC so they can say and see this does not, if you let us have the CBDCs, there will be no inflation because they've told us in their papers that that's how they're going to sell it is there are no, we, we can guarantee there will be no inflation when we have a CBDC. No, there'll be deflation because they also said in that same paper that there are no limitations to how low they can push interest rates. And that, once all purchasing power is gone, then what's left? Principal. That attacks your principal. And I can't say whether or not we'll be able to buy gold. I, I can't say that. Maybe the collectibles. Maybe not the bullion. I don't know whether or not they're going to do an overt confiscation because all of this manipulation and inflation is a covert confiscation. They've been doing that to you since the day you were born, no matter when that was. And by you asks, uh, this is regarding yesterday's headline news. Maybe Zimbabwe should peg its currency to a cheap metal like copper. That way they can actually back their currency in the physical form and even the poor could buy some. 
In fact, I think Zimbabwe, or it might be Zambia, has copper mines. And they do have those mines, but copper is an industrial metal. Gold is a monetary metal. But it is quite clear in the loss of adoption or the lack of adoption of their, their CBDC that is presumably backed by gold yet not convertible into it, that the public, having lost all confidence in the, those that are in power as well as the system, they're not buying it. And I wouldn't buy it either until it is convertible. But the wealthy there, the 1%, they're, what are they doing? They're buying the, the uh, they're not buying the U.S. Co coins. They're buying the gold coins that the government came out with like a year-ish ago. So, yeah, copper doesn't work. It's just like in Germany when they were in, uh, going into hyperinflation, they wanted to back their currency with rye because that was an important staple, but it also had a, has a shelf. No. Over the years, they've tried so many different things as money, but frankly, only gold and silver meet all the, cri well, primarily gold, meets all the criteria to be a good money. That's why nothing else really works. They've tried everything that they could possibly think of. And Richard Doris asks, so what if they back a currency with gold? And how many PhDs are at the Fed, Treasury, et cetera? None of them have a clue about inflation or the pending disaster. None of them? Well, I, I, I think that they do know that, that there is a disaster impending. And I do think that what they're trying to do is engineer that soft transition. They're calling it a soft landing. I'm calling it a soft transition. But uh, I think that they're also engineering a massive crisis because we have to accept what they want to cram down our throats. And we're only going to do that if we're scared enough. So they'll back the currency with gold. At least that's what history tells us. They'll back the currency with gold, but until it's convertible, don't believe it. And you're much better off becoming your own central banker and making sure that what you do is backed by gold and silver in your possession and the kind that they are less likely to, to do an overt confiscation with because covert's already happening. But there's such a difference right now between the paper market, so the spot gold market, and the, oops, and the physical only market, which is this market. So do any of them have a clue about inflation? No, they don't. They admitted we don't understand inflation either. So I think they do know about the impending disaster. I think they're scared. But understand, too, their job is to keep us calm and keep us in the system. It's the same thing with the government's job, right? But, but everything is just a little off kilter. So, And Matthew Brown asks, how do we know if the inflation numbers are real? They're not real. I don't believe any government data anymore. Smart, Matthew. No, it's not real because they keep changing it and modifying it and tweaking it and pulling things out and putting and substituting. Ah, oh, steak is too expensive. We'll put in hot dogs. So, um, no, the inflation numbers aren't real. What are your personal experiences? And no, I don't believe any government data because their job is to keep themselves, take care of themselves, their system not you and me, not to support us, but to stay and do whatever they need to do in order to do that. But maybe we're going to have a revolution. I think it's a really strong possibility because I think the, that the, you know, if this is the Wizard of Oz, that curtain's being pulled back and people are not liking what they see, just like you. I don't believe any government anymore. Yeah, that's what happens. And Derek T. asks, is recession <laughs> the new code word for depression? Uh-huh. Yes, absolutely. The, you know, the thing is, is that they're out of tools, right? So they created, they meaning the central banks with all their massive money printing, right? They created this problem. They don't accept any responsibility for this problem, but it's always wage increases and this and, and this and that and the other thing. Um, yeah, here's the problem. 
We have virtually no purchasing power left. We got to attack principal and the key tool that they use to regulate the rate and speed of inflation, which are interest rates. You see what's happening as they're attempting to raise them is they're causing the next crisis. So what do they do when there is a recession or depression? Remember, there is only one way. So it's not like there's a whole bunch of choices, but there's only one way to fight inflation and that's with deflation and only one way to fight deflation and that's with inflation. So therefore there'd be only one way to fight hyper deflation and that's with hyper inflation. But we're going into a new system. So the entire structure is that that's why you see it's like, it's like a bridge in a hurricane, you know? I mean, the markets are all doing this back and forth, back and forth until they just implode. I can't tell you exactly the moment that's going to happen, but you better have yourself all set up. Food, water, energy, security, barterability, wealth preservation, community, and shelter. Get it done. What are you waiting for? The writing's on the wall. And Home to Stead asks, I have silver and some gold. I can't get all of my money out of the bank, but was given a bank check good for only 90 days. What can I do with this, please? Thank you. Well, if you're given a bank check good for only 90 days, I would, you know, what you need to do is click that Calendly link and talk to one of our specialists so that they can get a lot more information on you. But I wouldn't allow the bank check just to go bad. Will they cash that? I mean, there's a certain level of cash that you need because that's your first line of defense. Can you put it into a checking account and buy more gold and silver and how much more and what kind do you need? So I'd say click that Calendly link below. If you don't have somebody here that you're already working with, create that relationship and get a whole lot more specific about what's going on. And then our job is to be of service and we'll help walk you through. And if they have any questions, not like any of the consultants don't know where to find me. I mean, we all work together. We've worked together for a really long time and we'll, we'll help you figure that out home to stead. And then uh, Janasheen asks, can you tell us what your thoughts on platinum besides gold and silver? Well, platinum is more rare than gold or silver, but it too is an industrial metal. And this is a currency life cycle issue. So I do have some platinum, but that is definitely not the lion's share of my holdings because I am very, 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 very clear that this is about a currencies. And therefore I want the primary currency metal, which is gold, the secondary currency metal, which is silver. That's what's going to put you in the best position. And you might recall a point where platinum Spot platinum was trading actually substantially higher than spot gold. That's not been the case for actually quite some time now. So just understand that platinum is um, a, uh, an industrial metal and this is not an industrial issue. This is a currency life cycle issue. Therefore you want the currencies metals. So stay tuned for tomorrow's video on wall street and the Supreme court conflicts shocker. And also don't forget, again, if you haven't created your strategy yet, it's based upon your goals, your circumstances, but click that Calendly link and please do yourself a favor and get it done. You know, people think that they're going to have the ability to get fully into position one second before the collapse and somehow they're going to know it. Even I'm not going to know one second before the collapse and I pay a lot of attention and I can tell you that honestly, because I was watching Shearson at back in 2008 and because that was my alma mater and I couldn't believe they would let it go out. So I'm just telling you, I would rather be, I don't care 10 years too early than even one second too late because that second costs you your freedom and your choices. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe. If you like this, please give us a thumbs up, leave a comment and share, 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 because the reality is 
And if you can't get all your, your money out of the banks, you wanna make sure that you are properly diversified to recoup any of those losses. And financial shields are made of physical gold and silver in your possession. Certainly not paper or promises. And until next we meet, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.